Let's start right away with the big news. In fact, the 2026 Ferrari will be unveiled in the week of January 20th before the Fiorano test and before the collective tests in Barcelona, which will take place from January 26th to 30th. And this is obviously good news for Ferrari. We'll see it as early as January. I can't wait to see the 2026 Ferrari and the Abu Dhabi tests have already started to try out the new regulations for next year, such as the active front wing and also the aerodynamic modification of the Ferrari in view of the new specification coming next year. Let's take a look together. Let's also look at Vassour's statement. Before we start, of course, I'd like to remind you to leave a like, subscribe and activate notifications so you don't miss any Formula One or Ferrari themed videos. I sincerely thank you for all the supportive messages and comments and the interesting insights you leave in the comments as they open up new discussions. That said, let's immediately take a look at Vassour's statement. In fact, Vassour said, I believe the philosophy of the car next year will be completely different. Perhaps the aerodynamic mapping won't be the same. And the problem we had this season won't occur next year. But obviously, we'll have other issues. So he gave a bit of hope to the fans. But at the same time, with the last sentence, but obviously we'll have other problems. He tried to restore some order. But be careful not to make the same mistake as last year, making excessive claims during the winter break that are not met on the track later, so be cautious with statements. During the Abu Dhabi tests, the team is putting the prototype of the 2026 steering wheel back on track, which will be used by both Leclerc and Hamilton. Additionally, Leclerc's mule car continues to use the rear suspension introduced at the Belgian Grand Prix. However, we know that the rear suspension will be thoroughly revised for next year. It hasn't been confirmed yet whether it will be pull rod or push rod for next year. The pull rod will probably be used at the rear, but the suspension will be completely different. And in this case, from this image, you can clearly see how Mercedes uses the active front wing system. These hydraulic actuators are also present on the mule car SF25 in Abu Dhabi and are still positioned under the nose, completely hidden from view, ensuring they don't interfere with the front airflow. The design appears much more integrated compared to what we saw earlier on the Mercedes V16. The system is activated via the steering wheel integrated with the traditional rear DRS mechanism. This allows both systems to be operated with a single button. Ferrari is currently using its 2026 steering wheel prototype on the track with Leclerc at the wheel. So while Mercedes is testing the system with hydraulic pipes above the front wing, Ferrari has everything integrated under the front wing. It's a system Ferrari has already tested this season on the mule car for next year and it's a system Ferrari knows better than its competitors. This is important to note. Here we can closely observe when the active front aero dynamics are deactivated, meaning the wing has the flap inclined in the normal way. And then below we see when it's active and the flap reduces the angle of incidence on the front wing, thus lowering the front wing flap. In this way, the active aerodynamics at the front are engaged so the flap needs to be lowered and left in the standard position to activate the front arrow. It works like a sort of DRS only on the front wing. In this image, we can see the Ferrari's hydraulic actuator, which is finally visible from the back, while Mercedes's was located in the front and top part. So Ferrari is hidden, if you will, and connects to the flap regulator. The flaps are pulled back and lowered depending on how this mode which is entirely new in 2026, is used. So in these Abu Dhabi tests, they are gaining more knowledge, getting to know better the systems that will be used next year, such as the active front aerodynamic system, and also the use of hybrid mapping. So several new systems will be used, and Ferrari, along with Mercedes and other teams, will experiment with these new solutions. Here we see exactly the X mode with everything active. We see the rear DRS and we have, let's say, the active front wing. So it's no longer called DRS, but works in the same way. Essentially, they reduce the incidence on the front and rear wings, having less drag, so less aerodynamic resistance on the straight. This image is very beautiful because you can really see a car speeding by very fast without using, let's say, aerodynamics in this case, trying to minimize the aerodynamics that obviously create drag and going as fast as possible on the straight. Very, very beautiful image. This afternoon, Hamilton will also run. 
testing the same specifications as Leclerc did this morning, of course. Meanwhile, on the other hand, this is the system used by Mercedes, which always reduces the front wing flap. However, unlike Ferrari, the cables and hydraulic pipes are visible externally. They are positioned at the top of the flap. So Pirelli said that, that all teams could experiment with different solutions for 2026 and Ferrari and Mercedes have introduced active aerodynamics in two different ways. These, however, are images of the new 2026 steering wheel, the one on the right, while the one on the left is the 2025 model. We see that the 2026 model has the shape of the Red Bull 1. It's very similar, but it also has different button turn placements to facilitate the use of the electric part of the engine the hybrid part, let's say, to give a hybrid boost on the straight, we know there are various modes that further push the car for next year, and these are positioned on the steering wheel, as well as the activation of the movable front wing. We must, of course, also comment on the words of Maurizio Arrivabin, who said, Will Leclerc stay? I hope so. If he stays, it means the car is competitive. I'm sure that with a competitive car, he will become world champion. And I agree with Maurizio Arrivabin. In my opinion, Leclerc should stay at least for a year in Ferrari to see the new project that, as we said, will be unveiled the week of January 20th, the new car, and obviously see how it goes. There will be several test sessions to experiment with active front aerodynamics and also see the use of hybrid power. But more importantly, there will be several weeks to improve the engine reliability, which will be completely revised, improve the aerodynamics of the car, and we'll see. Ferrari, however, stopped updates very early in this season, as Vasseur himself said, and everyone expects a Ferrari that arrives ready for the test. At least that. But then, of course, actually winning the title is a whole different story. But the goal for Ferrari is to compete for the title. That would be the biggest goal, and to start winning again is obviously the first step, and then to return to competing for the title with Leclerc, and also reconnect with Hamilton. Because Hamilton, as we saw in the last race in Abu Dhabi, had a somewhat strained relationship with Adami in the sense that we noticed a bit of tension in the team radio. He didn't want to hear Ricardo Adami intervening too much, giving him too much information. So we will see if Hamilton's track engineer will also change. Anyway, it's clear that Hamilton ended this year very, very stressed. He's only thinking about next year, and we all expect a rejuvenated Hamilton next year with non-ground effect cars, because they will no longer have Venturi channels, but will have flat bottoms and thus uh, generate downforce differently, and maybe they will better meet the needs of the seven-time world champion. You see, so surely I agree with Maurizio Arrivabin, we want to see Leclerc fighting for the title, and he has the potential to win the world championship. If Norris won it, Leclerc can certainly win it too, um, but we need to see if the car will be up to the task. If it's not up to par, I also agree with, with Leclerc in saying that's enough, I'll abandon the project and go to another team, presumably Aston Martin. And note that we have very important news. Helmut Marko will indeed leave Red Bull at the end of this year. Eric Van Haren confirmed it. He said that after team principal Christian Horner, a few months later, Helmut Marko will also leave Red Bull at the end of this year. And obviously, this is a turning point for Red Bull. And his departure will not affect Max Verstappen's future. Meaning that regardless, Max Verstappen's future is decided. And the world champion will decide it. But Helmut Marko has made this decision to retire from racing. So let's say he has done his part, if you will, and it's right this way. Many have cheered for this news because Helmut Marko has created more chaos than anything else in recent months. The latest incident was with Kimi, with Kimi Antonelli. And in this case, Sky Sport also republished that Helmut Marko will leave Red Bull at the end of this year. So a cycle closes for Red Bull. Overall, because we have Helmut Marko's departure, Christian Horner leaves, they abandon Honda engines because now they will start producing their own Red Bull powertrains engines in Milton Keynes. In short, there is a total rebuilding within Red Bull. And the only one who remains at the top, if you will, at the top of Red Bull is Max Verstappen himself, who wants to take charge of the team and lead it towards the title victory and lead it, of course, towards winning the, the title. So we will see how Red Bull wi will fare in the coming years. But not only that, Helmut Marko will retire from Red Bull at the end of the year, despite having a contract until 2026 for next year's season. And so, after Christian Horner's departure, we also recalled Adrian Newey, who went to Aston Martin. So Adrian Newey also left Red Bull. Now Helmut Marko is also leaving, 
leaving Pierre Watch, who took charge of the technical project, struggling a bit up after Adrian Newey's departure, but trying to restore the situation. Instead, Laurent McQuiet has been a savior for Red Bull, because when Laurent McQuiet arrived, from then on Red Bull started to perform well this year, from after the summer break onwards, bringing a bit more order within the Red Bull system. In this case, Helmut Marko is leaving, so we'll see how Red Bull will manage to recover the situation in the coming years. And note that Helmut Marko, yes, can leave Red Bull if he finds an agreement with Red Bull itself, because he supposedly has a contract until 2026. But if Helmut Marko were to leave Red Bull at the end of this year, which is almost taken for granted now, then Max Verstappen also has a clause in his contract that would allow him to leave Red Bull despite being bound until 2028. So be aware that um, even Max Verstappen could leave Red Bull. And we'll see if he does in the future. In my opinion, Max is gearing up for 2026. He wants to see what Red Bull will be like in 2026. Although we all know that it will start at a disadvantage compared to other top teams. Especially Ferrari and Mercedes in particular, which have been both constructors and engine manufacturers for many years. Whereas Red Bull is a new engine manufacturer now so it will certainly struggle more compared to other top teams. We'll have to see if Max Verstappen will have the chance to fight for the title. If Red Bull starts at a clear disadvantage compared to all other top teams, I think it's inevitable that Verstappen will consider leaving the team and going either to Mercedes or Aston Martin. These are the two possibilities I see on the horizon. However, of course, it will depend a lot on Red Bull's performance. Lando Norris has confirmed the number one for 2026. In fact, having won the title, he can use the number 1 next year. Max Verstappen will return to using the number 33 and therefore for the 2026 season, after becoming the 35th Formula 1 world champion, Lando Norris will use the number 1. This is the helmet that Lando Norris also used after winning the title during the Abu Dhabi test. Very beautiful because it features, let's say, the gold color on his helmet and I really like it, obviously, to, um, let's say, symbolize the world title victory so a lot of great stuff let me know in the comments what you think about the active aerodynamics for next year are you convinced or not what do you also think about the ferrari presentation that will take place the week of january 20th and the tests before the tests in fiorano and then the collective tests in um, barcelona and tell me your thoughts on helmut marco leaving red bull at the end of this year could it also imply that max verstappen will then leave red bull in the future let me know your thoughts in the comments I'm curious to know what you think about active aerodynamics. Obviously, I remind you to leave a like, subscribe, and activate notifications so you don't miss any Formula 1 and Ferrari-themed videos. That's all from Rasta. See you in the next video.